Hey, this is Richard. With the Boston Celtics training camp underway, I thought it would be a good time to look back at the top 10 moments from the 2024 postseason. The Celtics went 16-3 in the postseason, on their way to a record-setting 18th championship. No series went beyond five games, so there were no do-or-die Game 7 moments, but still there were some tight games and memorable plays some consequential, and some that will be remembered more for entertainment value, as is the case with number 10 on this list. It's Game 5 of the NBA Finals, and the Celtics are cruising as the first half comes to a close. Four seconds to go. Missed free throw, four for the rebound. Here's Pritchard, he loves these. Puts it up, half court of the buzzer. Bang! Pritchard! The buzzer with a three-pointer. He's done it again. Peyton Pritchard's buzzer-beating heave didn't have a big impact on the game. It pushed the Celtics' lead from 18 to 21, but it blew the roof off the garden, got the team fired up, and cemented Pritchard's status as the game's premier half-court heave specialist. Unbelievable that Dallas didn't cover him more closely here. For number nine, we go to game three of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers. The Celtics are down five in the fourth quarter and time is running out. Fireplace on its feet. Tatum drives, goes inside behind the back. Horford, corner three, puts it in. Al Horford from downtown. Great job by Jason Tatum here, drawing coverage before flipping the behind-the-back pass to Al Horford for the open three. Horford stepped up big for the Celtics after Kristaps Porzingis went down with a calf injury in the opening round series against Miami. His ability to defend, shoot threes, and bully ball smaller players in the post was crucial to the Celtics' championship run. Speaking of Kristaps Porzingis, Play number eight on this list takes us back to the NBA Finals. Game one, the first quarter is winding down and the Celtics are rolling. Tatum gets past Irving, stripped and stolen by Irving. Here comes Josh Green, one man to beat, but it's a seven-footer who blocks it again. Three block shots for Porzingis Pritchard. After missing the Cleveland and Indiana series with a calf injury, Kristaps Porzingis came off the bench in Game 1 of the Finals and played like a man possessed. He got buckets, rebounds, and he capped off the quarter with this block of a Josh Green breakaway dunk. His stellar play continued until he suffered an ankle injury in Game 2 that effectively ended his playoffs. Still, it was fun to see this flash of dominance, a reminder of why the Celtics traded for him in the 2023 offseason. Play number seven comes from game three of the NBA Finals. About three minutes to go. Dallas has mounted a furious comeback and the Celtics lead has dwindled from 21 points to only three. Dallas, just tough breaks for them, but I think the right call both times. Uh, they've got to stay mentally with it. It's still just a three point game with plenty of time remaining, but without their star. Drew Holiday. On the drive, kicks it back out. White puts up a three. Bang! Derek White from downtown. This is the kind of play Joe Mazzulla dreams about in his sleep. Drew Holiday beats his man on the baseline, draws coverage, and kicks it out to Derek White for an open three. The lead doubles to six. The crowd is deflated. Just a huge play in one of the most memorable games of the postseason. For number six, we stay in the NBA Finals. Game two, a very competitive affair with less than a minute to go, and Dallas is closing in on Boston. Game two of the NBA Finals. Celtics looking to take a 2-0 lead. Tatum shut off by Doncic, tries again. Tatum to the rim, shot block. Derek Jones with the rejection. Here's Irving, Washington drives, blocked by White. Oh, what a block from Derek White. The Celtics' defense keyed their championship run, so it's only fitting to have a few defensive plays on this list. This particular one was quite controversial, 
and many fans thought P.J. Washington got fouled not once, but twice on this finish attempt. Personally, I think it was a reasonable no call. As many have pointed out, the hand is considered part of the ball, so Derek White gets a pass, and the alleged Jalen Brown shove to the back does not look particularly egregious on replay. Either way, the block preserved the Celtics' lead and helped them go to Dallas up to zip. For number five, we go to the Eastern Conference Finals and game one has gone down to the final minute of overtime. The rim from Jason Tatum. He's been so good finishing this year, just unable to get that one to go down. Tatum wanting it, gets it inside. Tatum across the lane, count it, and a foul! Banks it home! To travel. JJ, to keep your footwork, somebody's closing. You're between a dribble and a move, and he able with great patience to get the con. The Celtics tied this one in dramatic fashion near the end of regulation, but they still had to play a five-minute overtime period, and it wasn't looking too good when the Pacers went up by two with about a minute to go. But then Jason Tatum took over. He made this tough and one to put the Celtics ahead, and then he hit a three on the next possession to effectively seal the win. Number four takes us back to game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. It's the final minute. The Pacers have the lead. The Celtics have the ball. And he lays it up and in, 107-101. Hayden finds Holiday. Holiday gives it side. Leans in, banks it in, and the foul. Tie game with 38.9 remaining. And a free throw coming up for Holiday. This, show, this play will show up in the box score. Drew Holiday with the strength. Another huge and one here, this time from Drew Holiday, to put the Celtics ahead to stay. Holiday came up big in this game, and I'll have more on him later. Now we're down to the final three. At number three, we go back to game three of the NBA Finals. There's a minute to go, and Dallas has made it close. The big play from Jalen Brown. Brown using the screen. Drives, pulls up, jump shot, puts it in! Jalen Brown now with 30, and the lead back up to four. Game three of the NBA Finals was fascinating. I've watched it a couple times on tape, and it has several chapters to it. There was Dallas coming out like gangbusters, the crowd going nuts. Patrick Mahomes, Emmett Smith, Dirk Nowitzki, and Steve Nash cheering them on from the front row. It looked like it was going to be the Mavs' night. Then the Celtics reeled them in and took control of the game with a very strong third quarter. Only Dallas wouldn't go away, even after Luka Doncic fouled out. They cut the lead from 21 to 1 in what seemed like the blink of an eye, and it felt like the Celtics were fading. But then Jalen Brown came up huge. Here he went to his mid-range jumper for a crucial bucket that effectively squashed Dallas's hopes for a title. The number two play takes us back to the Eastern Conference Finals and the all-important Game 3. The Celtics made a great comeback to take a narrow lead, but now Indiana has the ball with less than 10 seconds to go and a chance to win. Rick Carlisle says go. Nimhart drives into the paint. Knocked away. It's stolen by Holiday. Siakam trying to get him, but he fouled him with 1.1 remaining. Rick Carlisle thought there was a foul. He's upset. The Boston Celtics won the title on June 17, 2024, but you could make the case that they actually won it the year before, on October 1st, when Brad Stevens completed a trade with Portland for Drew Holiday. Holiday made a variety of winning plays during this title run. There was the aforementioned left-handed pass to Derek White, the end one against Indiana, but in terms of drama, this steal off Aaron Nemhart was my favorite. Just a savvy play. Holiday slides his feet from right to left and pokes the ball away with his left hand. As a Celtics fan, it was an emotional roller coaster there. One second you're bracing for the Pacers' last shot, and the next, Drew Holiday is dribbling the ball to the other end of the court, where he gets fouled and makes both free throws. A dramatic moment and a huge relief as the Celtics secured an insurmountable three-zip lead in the conference finals. It's time for the top play of the Boston Celtics 2024 playoff run, and it's those pesky Indiana Pacers again. 
There's eight seconds to go in regulation. The Celtics are down three, and they're inbounding the ball under their own basket. And I'd wager that every Celtics fan knows what happened next. Tatum trying to get free. Throw it in the corner. Brown fakes, fires up the three. Bang! Bang! Jalen Brown knocks down the three to tie the game. This was a good play out of a timeout after the Pacers turned it over on the inbounds pass. Jalen Brown goes to set a screen for Derek White, but instead he runs his defender, Pascal Siakam, into a screen and then cuts to the corner. This gave him enough space to catch the inbounds pass from Drew Holiday, but he still had to make a very difficult shot. Siakam got right up on him, but he was taking pains not to foul him, and Brown got a good look and made a great shot, one for the ages. If he misses it, no telling what happens. The Pacers played Boston tough and they could have easily won three of those first four games. The fact that they didn't is a testament to the Celtics' maturity. If there was one concern about the Celtics going into the postseason, it was their ability to close out games. Many times in the regular season, they would have a double-digit lead and then on offense, they would stop moving the ball and go into iso ball. The other team would get transition buckets and the lead would evaporate. But I think it's fair to say that the Celtics answered those concerns resoundingly in the postseason. In fact, every close game they were involved in, they won. Their three losses were just blowout losses where the other team played well and the Celtics were a little flat. But I think it's a great sign of maturity that again and again, they made winning plays in close games to win the title. I just want to point out that these 10 plays include seven different Celtics players, which is a testament to their depth. You know, a lot of people argue about who's the best player, who's top five, who's top 10, but basketball is a team sport and the Celtics definitely had the best top six of any team in the league. They could all defend, they could all shoot threes, and in today's NBA, that is hugely important. They've got the whole band back now for the 24-25 season, so I like their chances. Fingers crossed. Thanks for watching.